What is going on everybody? My name is Alex Freeberg and today we're going to be going over what to say versus what not to say in a data analyst interview. Now before we get into the actual questions and examples, we're going to start with some general guidelines that I think are very important. So number one is don't talk bad about your previous employer. It will not make you look better, I promise you. Number two is stay positive. Having somebody who is positive and energetic uh, just brings a nice light to the interview and can make you much more likable and that is very important. Number three is talk about the skills that you do have, not the skills that you don't have. Number four is be honest or at least don't exaggerate too much. Uh, number five is know your selling points and highlight them. If SQL is your thing and you're amazing at it, be sure to really highlight that in your interview. Number six is be confident. I know it can be tough for a lot of people, but confidence is a very attractive quality in a person who's interviewing. And number seven is be thankful. Everybody likes somebody who is appreciative and thankful for something. So when you go into an interview, be sure to thank the people for taking the time out of their day to talk to you about this position. So now that we've gone through some guidelines, let's look at some real examples. So number one, something you do not want to say is, my last job was terrible. They overworked and underappreciated me. I was obviously the hardest worker on the team. One thing that you might say is, I really enjoyed the challenge and the pace of my last job, but I'm looking to take on more responsibility. The reason for that is it's really hard to look good when you're talking bad about your employer. Even if you have a really tough current job or previous job, don't bring that into this interview. Try to be positive and really stick to the point that you're gonna be a good employee and you're looking to take on more responsibility, more whatever. Number two is, no, I think you've covered everything. I really don't have any questions. What you should say is, yes, I do have some questions and then have those questions ready and available and you can get all those questions in our very first video of this series and so you should have plenty of questions to choose from and the reason is that asking questions can show initiative and interest in the position and it also gets them to talk a little bit more and talk a little bit about things that they didn't already have planned and so you can really differentiate yourself from other candidates who may have not asked questions or asked different questions and so you can just start that conversation and build a little bit of rapport in that short amount of time that you do have number three is what does your company do? What you should say is, I really like the work that your company does. I saw that you have a product that does something and it sounds really interesting. Is that something that I would get to work on? The reason again is showing initiative. It shows that you're interested in the position that you did research and that is always something that interviewers will look for and really like to see. Number four is, I know I don't have a lot of experience but I'll work really hard. What you should say is something like, I think my experience with SQL will be really useful for this position or a really good fit for this position. I kind of imagine this at the end of the interview as you guys are wrapping up and you don't really want to come off desperate or, you know, I really will work hard, I promise. Say, you know, I think that I'll be a really good fit for this position if you do feel that. The reason is you wanna stay positive and you wanna highlight your strengths as always good throughout the entire interview and you wanna show them why they should hire you instead of showing them why they shouldn't hire you. Number five is, I really need this job. I'm just, I'm really going through a tough time right now. Can you, can you help me out? Is there anything you can do for me? What you should say is something like, I'm really looking forward to this new opportunity. Thank you for bringing me in. You know, what's your time frame on making a hire for this position? Things like that. The reason is, is they want to choose you, somebody who's good for that position, not feel like they have to choose you because of the situation that you're in. Now we're gonna get into a few questions. I think these will be really helpful. The first one is, what's your greatest weakness? You will see this in almost every interview. What's your greatest strength? What's your greatest weakness? You'll see this one a lot. And what you do not want to say is, oh, I'm a perfectionist. I just, I'm so good at keeping things perfect. I really care about all the small details. That's not a weakness. Uh, I work too hard. I really don't have any weaknesses. All those answers are really not good. It's really hard to look good when you're talking about how perfect you are. What you wanna to try to do is highlight something that actually is a weakness, but how you're trying to work on that. So here's an example of that, is I can be impatient when working in groups sometimes. I'm very self-sufficient, and I don't really like to rely on others to complete my work on time. I know I need to work on this, and I've been taking on more leadership roles and tasks, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The reason for this question is they wanna know how self-aware you are. So don't answer the question saying, oh, I'm so perfect, oh, I don't have any weaknesses. Highlight an actual weakness that everybody can relate to or that is a real one that you actually work with or struggle with and talk about how you're trying to improve that and what you're doing to make that better. Number two is tell us about yourself. And this first example is pretty close to an actual interview that I had, so please don't do this. Somebody said, well, you know, I'm recently divorced. I really enjoy backpacking, fishing. I used to work as a bus driver. I have five dogs. The interviewer is really not asking about your personal life and what you like to do for vacations or for fun. 
You can maybe incorporate that a little bit, but for the most part, they're talking about professionally. And so an answer that you might wanna say is, well, currently I'm a data analyst at a healthcare analytics company. I've been using SQL Server Management Studio and Azure a lot. Before I took that role, I graduated a master's or a bachelor's in this degree, and I'm very passionate about the work that I do, and I'm really looking forward to working with you or working alongside you. The reason for this is, although I'm sure they'd love to hear about your five dogs' names and personalities, they really want to hear about you as an employee. They want to get to know you as a worker because that's what they're hiring you for. So talk about your current employment, some of your main skills as an employee. Number three is, why are you looking to leave your current role? Now, something you don't want to say is, my current boss is terrible and my coworkers are so lazy. I feel like I'm doing all the work. I really just want to get on a team where everyone really contributes. What you should say is something like, I'm looking for a new opportunity at a larger company. I want to take on more responsibility. Those are things that employers want to hear. It'll make you look good. The reason for this is interviewers want to see that you're trying to gain new skills, that you're taking on more responsibility because that's what they want in a long-term employee. Number four is where do you see yourself in five years? And I feel like this question gets asked in almost every single interview, so it's one that you definitely want to prepare for because you most likely will get asked it. What you do not want to say is, oh, I'm probably gonna have your job, or you know, I really want to work at Google, how cool would that be? Or I really don't know. An example of what you might want to say is, over the next few years, I want to broaden and develop my skills in data analytics. In five years, I'll be looking for new opportunities to expand my responsibilities within this role. You may even say something like, you know, if the opportunity presents itself for an advancement in my current position to a higher position, I'd be more than happy to take that position or move into a position like that. Anything like that that shows that you're gonna continue to work there and you're gonna continue to develop your skills is really good. The reason for this is genuinely, this is a trick question. Nobody can see the future. Nobody knows what they're gonna do. They may have aspirations, but often your aspirations are gonna conflict with what they want. I know my aspirations are, I eventually wanna move into a management role, but I would never say that in an interview because I know that that's not what they wanna hear. And so I'll be a little bit vague and I'll say, you know, I really wanna continue developing my skills and, and continue to take on responsibilities. That's really what they're hoping to hear or something along those lines. Number five is what are your salary expectations? Again, another one that you are most likely get asked. So what you don't wanna say is, well, how much are you offering? What did the last person in this position make? 20% more than whatever you're offering. And for what you should say, be sure to check out the next video where we're gonna be talking about everything salary related, which is the final part of the interview process. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next video.